minutes time flies by You'll open up your eyes wide You feel it's gonna go Norjay for setting up this interview. It's so nice to meet people that are out of the comfort zone and out of the inner circle. Ali, lovely to meet you. Nicole King, a pleasure. <laughs> lovely to meet you. Crossing paths Nicole. all morning during the recording, but finally a, a chance to chat. So, Ali, tell us a little bit about yourself. You founded a president's club. You've made up names of Urbit. Orbitus. Orbitus, which we're going to find out what that is. Tell us a bit about yourself. I'm, I'm Iranian, Nicole. So You're moved, Iranian? I'm Iranian. Very we nice. Here, we moved here in 85 and I went to the English International College, which a lot of people know. Yes, we do. In fact, I interviewed Chris. The, um, the principal of the school, he was sitting right there, right. where you're sitting now, so <laughs> fabulous. And that was 30 odd years ago. I, mean, I hadn't actually realised, so till chatting with him, the school had been there that this long. Uh, yeah. So you, oh, are, a local, started, you yeah. are a local product. Pretty much, pretty much. And I love that school, I have to say. I did dedicate my third book to them, to the English International College. And I'm still in very close contact with third them. Third book? Absolutely. Tell I've written us about five. the first two before we get yeah. on to the third. I've written five books. The first one was Welcome to Internet. Then the second one was the final second about the year 2000 problems, which weren't that much actually. It was blown out of proportion, like many things. Then the third one was the business on, uh, business, Internet for Business and Internet for Research, and the final one was Introduction to Genetics and Biotechnology. Wow, quite a jump. Yeah. Why suddenly the more specialization? What did you find out? What happened I, I, that put you on that path? I did Ooh. my PhD in genetic engineering. So I actually Are you worried about the genetic engineering situation at, at the moment and the lack all. of control thereof? No, we progress. Everything is about progress. So if you think of Mendel, you know, he was doing genetic engineering, but with I know, but that very wasn't good. We, we weren't kind of happy with <laughs> what was going on then. I mean, not quite the, <laughs> the comparison that one's hoping for. OK, so you obviously have a, a talent for writing. Um, but it's not just that, because you seem to be, from everything I've read about you and see, it's very much about promoting others, lifting others up, sharing something that you seem to have innate in yourself of this <laughs> confidence, joy, capability, and like sharing it is, am I getting a good summary of you? True, I, I set up a company called Orbitus, which is really a software for property owners, homeowners, where they live in a community, and administration companies, administradores de fincas, and through this journey of creating this software and coming to sell it, I started writing and giving lectures something called passion and vision, which I've turned it into passion and vision. It's all about when you have an idea, you have a passion. And what happens is a lot of people have brilliant ideas and they start on this journey, but they leave it halfway through because they either don't have that vision or they don't have that passion to push through the hardship. And I went through that hardship. We had somebody copying us. We weren't able to sell during the crisis years. We missed a couple of rounds of funding. So it was like punch after punch. And entrepreneurship is tough. You know, it's never a straight line. You plan one thing and you end up somewhere else. And you think, you know, you're going to climb the mountain. But you're going to have to, at some point, come back down, choose a different route. And along this line, I realized, hey, I know I went through some rough times and I know there are loads of other people out there who are going through the same. So I thought, I'm happy to help them. I'm happy to tell them, look, don't be afraid of what you were saying early on. Don't be afraid of people copying you. They're already copying you. They already have the same idea, just like when I started Orbitus, there were other people around the world who were doing similar thing to us. And one of my fears when I started Obitus, of course, as a first time entrepreneur was, oh, people might be copying me and, you know, I don't want people copying me. So I wouldn't talk about it initially and I was very secretive, but big mistake. 
So I, I help people with that, and I help them lift their energies when they come to a low. I give motivational talks to entrepreneurs. I mean, uplifting, no, lo siguiente. I mean, you really do. You have a great energy, a great joy, and you obviously feel that through the mistakes you've made, you can spare others those same mistakes and trials and tribulations. I, I try. I try. At the moment, I do have a group, entrepreneurs group, Costa del Sol entrepreneurs group, so I do run some events. And what we, kind of things do you do there? Because it's all sounding like I should be there. <laughs> We, we have all sorts of events. I have events where I actually invite other entrepreneurs to speak about themselves, their product. We have an event which is a boot camp, actually public speaking for entrepreneurs, which I'm doing next week in Gibraltar. Or not even next week, this Saturday, actually, coming Saturday, I think it was So it's next never week. non-stop. It's non-stop. So you're an author, you're an entrepreneur, you are a businessman, you are a coach. <laughs> <laughs> How I'm you, an entrepreneur. You sum yourself up as entrepreneur. I sum myself up as an entrepreneur. And why would one of our viewers contact you? What would be, they say like, okay, Ali, I would like you to help me with, why would people contact you? Why would people to contact speak me? speak at an event? I'm, I'm a software entrepreneur. So if they're interested in software, in software development, or investing in software and startups, I'm, I'm there, and also entrepreneurs who are struggling or would like to start and are not necessarily struggling, would like a co-founder, we're also willing to help. So I do have now a team with me who are also entrepreneurs, like myself, so we help each other. Absolutely fabulous. You couldn't get more hashtag better together <laughs> if you tried. Ali, I'm just delighted to meet you. Igualmente. <laughs> Lovely meeting you, Nicole. Really a pleasure. Pleasure is mine. Ali, details are there? Give him a contact. Thank you. That was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>A lot of people prefer to take their own car when going out at night. However, when it comes to time to go home, that might not be the safest or wisest option. For some, just one glass of wine could put you over the legal limit, which means if you drive, you could put in yourself or others at risk. If you find yourself in this dilemma and think possibly you should not be driving, you can just give Linear Director a call. They will order and pay for a taxi, which will take you and your fellow companions who were with you in the car home with up to a 25 kilometer radius, as long as you all fit in that one taxi and you're all going to the same place. You can even ask for them to pick up your car and take that back too. And this is seven days a week from midnight to 7 a.m. and up to four times a month. And this is obviously all in addition to the fabulous insurance that you get with Linear Director. Hello, I'm Aksana Mez from OWL. Welcome, and all Zero Heroes welcome here to enjoy our special treats, non-alcoholic mojito and homemade lemonade. Welcome in Art Cafe, and of course, we are honored to present Zero Hero. Kabinski Hotel by here welcomes Zero Hero designated drivers. Hotel Walpi Manus welcomes all zero heroes. So here in our sports bar we are zero hero partners, of course. Zero hero welcome at Hatame in Guadalpin Manus. Zero hero drivers are welcome in GK. Conductores de Zero Hero están bienvenidos en GK. a whole year since I had a chance to chat with Anna Maria. As you can see, she's also part of the Butterfly Children charity team. And we're going to have a quick reminder what Anna Maria does specifically, because obviously we are big supporters of such an important charity in our community. Anna Maria, welcome back. Bienvenida de vuelta. Thank you so much. <laughs> lovely to see you. You look amazing. Thank you. You too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so lovely. A praise club, self-praise club. Anna Maria, what is it exactly that you do within the organization of Deborah of the Butterfly Children? 
Well, mainly my work consists of um, raising awareness of the condition. So I help the charity to um, give visibility and give awareness of the butterfly children families. For example, through social media. So we've got now Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Um, so as you know, it's an easy way to reach more, m much more people. Um, because the butterfly skin is still so unknown for many, many people. Even the doctors, they don't know about the condition. So we need to be there and to get them in any way possible. So part of my job is uh, to raise that awareness. And then I try to raise funds also uh, to improve the quality of life of the families. So we have, as you know, a part of uh, professionals. Um, they are nurses, psychologists, and social workers. They do an amazing job. And uh, I try to help them. So with the funds that we raise, uh, with Charo also, with our team, uh, we can have those funds for the projects themselves. Do you see, because obviously the Butterfly Children Charity is worldwide, but Butterfly Children Spain, do you see the difference with the awareness or the administration acceptance to, to collaborate different, like say from the north of Spain to the south of Spain, are there areas that are more supportive? What's the, what's the general feedback? Yeah, exactly. There are, there are still some difference inside Spain. So for example, our, tea, our colleagues from social workers, they work really hard because for example, in some uh, provinces, they don't get the bandages that their families need. So we have to fight to get those bandages for free. So for example, if you have a butterfly child, you need uh, topic creams, you need bandages, you need to, uh, to have a nurse in your house periodically. So we have to fight for those rights. Because there's obviously some countries you can do things nationally, but in Spain everything is done by provinces. provinces. So it's like individual conversation with each government, exactly. local government, each administration, and then the changeover of different employees with the elections, it doesn't help. Exactly. So it really does need consistency, I suppose, exactly. is, the, is the key. Actually, now we have, as part of the team, one colleague that is specially focused on lo lobbying. Lobbying, yes. lobbying, exactly. So she um, she goes to each uh, community autonoma, community autonoma, and uh, she meets with uh, all the politicians to say, hey, this is what we need, and it has to be covered. What is the next step? It's a never-ending um, saga, really, isn't it? I mean, it's definitely a lot of work, a lot of dedication by a lot of our professionals. It's amazing how many areas you have to cover yes. just to let people know. When a child is born with butterfly children, when they contact the charity, how does the, what's the first step? So if someone's like, okay, I know somebody, or oh my God, yes, with a, some medical professional, how do they contact you? What are the pros, what's the procedure? Yeah, normally it's the family themselves that they contact us, or sometimes it's their professional. So for example, a nurse or a dermatologist, they call to the office and they say, I think a baby has been born with butterfly skin. Can you help us? And then the first step is that in less of 48 hours, our psychologists and our nurse travel to that hospital in any part of Spain, can be the Canary Island or Madrid or the north of Spain, and they travel there and they train the professionals at the hospital and they also support the families. So I mean, it really is fundamental because it's such a rare condition, then obviously a very delicate Constitution literally, which is why it's called the Butterfly Children Charity, because their skin is as delicate as the wings of a butterfly. Anna Maria, how did you get involved with the charity? Actually, I knew about Debra when I was studying in London. I was doing the, my degree was advertising and public relations, and I had to create like a project, and I, I wanted to do for an NGO, for a charity. And then suddenly I was searching on internet, and I found a, a blog of a mother who baby was had passed away. It was super a super super sad as you can imagine blog. I, I couldn't even finish to read it and I couldn't believe it. it was like wow this I didn't know about this disease before about this condition. And then I asked my colleagues how, how, do you know about this condition in your country in America in the U, in the US in the in, in the UK and they, they didn't know about it. So they, that that made me feel made me think wow I need to search more about this thing. 
Um, that's why I knew about Debra, UK, and then when I came back to Spain, I discovered about Debra, Spain. Are you from this area in Spain? Yes, yes, from you're Malaga. From, you're from Malaga. So how about that? You go to London yeah. to find out about a charity that was created for the Spanish and those who live in Spain with this condition. It was meant to be. Exactly. That's I mean, what it I was, think. It was meant to be. I mean, you had to be there to do that to yes. end up back here. Yes. That's absolutely fabulous. Quickly, how many ways can we help with the charity? Well, um, next next week um, on 29th of, of February, it will be the International Rare Disease Day. So I would like to mention that because I think it's important that we, ca we cannot forget that there are more than 7 million rare diseases around the world. So it can happen to any of us. So we, I think we need to create that empathy to, with, with the families. Uh, so please, please, people that are uh, watching this video on this program, if they can search any rare disease like butterfly skin or any other and support them. And we have many ways, for example, a charity team. That's super easy to do. If you have any company, restaurant, bar, um, any shop, if you can put a team, we can send it to you without any cost. And also now that we are approaching to the spring term and there are many weddings coming up, for example, we have charitable, charitable details, like for example, these butterflies or any other bracelet and all those charitable articles that people can, can select from, from our charity. And there are many, many ways if they can uh, search for us on social media, uh, Piel de Mariposa or Butterfly Children Charity, uh, please do because uh, any, any help would be really appreciated. Amazing, incredible. You can see the passion, and as you see, it was just meant to be. Anna Maria, thank you very much. You. You've got our full support. And uh, remember, Rare Disease Day coming up, and any rare disease, it's always good to get information out because you just never know who needs it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enhorabuena, gracias. <laughs>